Welcome back to the BirdCast, the official podcast of Warburg Athletics. I'm Trent Jackson, Sports Information Director at Warburg. Episode 2 features Chris Gustus, men's and women's head tennis coach at Warburg. Chris is a 2011 Warburg graduate and has led the Knights to a program record wins in a single season on both the men's and women's side, including the first conference title in school history for the women in 2018. During today's conversation, Chris and I chatted all things Warburg tennis, including his journey from a role player as a student athlete to becoming the all-time women's tennis coaching wins leader at Warburg. Chris, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me, Trent. How are you? What's, what's, uh, how have you been keeping busy? Well, things that I can do right now that I normally can't is, um, you know, take time to step back and learn and, um, you know, really just trying to set up my next recruiting class and get our freshmen ready to come in. Um, and then, you know, little things like trying to communicate with our current roster, There's so, some things they should be doing and also just checking in because otherwise it's going to be quite a gap between when I saw them last and when I see them next. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it was, so take me back to, you know, it was around mid-March when everything got officially canceled. And I know your last match was March 6th. You guys were on your uh, spring break trip in Orlando. Um, just take me back to when that news that the season was officially canceled. Yeah, we did not expect that to happen, especially not so quick. Like we'd, we'd done all of our matches in Orlando. We came back, we had a couple days off and then we, you know, we kept getting like little bits of news of things being canceled at, you know, the D one level and, but kind of talked about how like, well, maybe it's because of the huge number of fans and we won't, get the same treatment. Um, if you can think of a less low risk, you know, a sport that's more low risk than tennis, maybe golf, but you know, we're not near the opponent and we're, we don't have a lot of fans that, you know, go to our meets, a lot of parents and things, but, um, not a big crowd. So we thought maybe we would miss all that, but maybe just kind of being in denial. And then, um, on that, I think it was Friday the 13th actually. And they, the news came and, we, I had a recruit on campus that day, so I had to sort of, I don't know, you can't really be excited and happy on that day, but you got to kind of fake it a little bit. But I saw our players and just kind of gave them an, an open office that they could come in and talk. And I saw, I had a lot of them come by, um, you know, obviously emotional, you know, and I think that that has sort of developed over time you know, you definitely feel like you missed out on some opportunities and, um, you know, we liked the direction that we were heading and some opportunities we had, especially, um, with the women, you know, being a a strong team that maybe had a chance to qualify for a national tournament, which we've never done before. Um, but I think that a lot of it was just like, you expect to get to take on those challenges and it's one thing to lose, like losing hurts, but at least there is Um, some finality to it and when you do this instead it's just kind of it felt very empty and it felt just kind of like you you anticipate a lot of these things and then you just know that they're not going to happen and you're not really angry at anybody because you know that that's the way it should be and it's nobody's fault but um, but yeah it still hurts and I think a lot of them just expected to have more time with each other and expected you know, to get to take on all those challenges that we've been training so long to get ready for. Yeah, I'm sure it was kind of an unprecedented feeling for, for all of our coaches, something that's never really happened before. Um, for sure. Yeah, so we touched on you guys um, just had just come back from that trip in Florida, maybe recap mm-hmm. that trip a bit. I'm sure that made it, I mean, you touched on it. It's kind of, especially yeah. down to the moods that you're kind of coming off of a high of just a fun trip like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And <clears throat> the thing that's weird is we didn't know it was senior night. You know, our last right. meet was against Midway and I made sure to get all of our seniors into that meet. And, uh, and I didn't, I didn't know it was their last match. And, you know, it's kind of cool. Like Gabby Owen Zach had a win in that meet. Um, it was a good win and she handled herself very, very well the whole time. Um, and we needed her to win, to win that meet. And, you know, it would have been nice to know that she was going to finish it off that way, but it, now it's, it's a very nice memory. And, um, you know, same Hannah Fox is a senior that 
you know, had a, had a match, a doubles match with a freshman, Olivia Phillips, and they won a very close match there and that clinched the meet. So it was a very nice way to go out. Um, you know, and our, our other senior, Lauren O'Brien played in there, Rachel Zittergruen missed that meet she was going to go be in a wedding so she left the spring break trip early so some stuff it's just kind of weird like you you don't treat it the same as you would if you knew it was ending and um you know it's like rachel and lauren they have been doubles partners forever and they really really you know that's like a special thing to them and they always talk about like how sad it's going to be when they're done and um then they they don't know that they're done and actually their last doubles match wasn't even with each other because it was like Rachel had left earlier in the week. Um, and then so Ben Mason and Grant Kincaid were our other seniors that were on on the trip with us. And Grant played they, – they played some very good opponents, but I thought that they played well. And it was – I don't know. It, it, again, it was just sort of one of those where, like, you you always have, like, this build up to senior night and things, and we just didn't get that. Um, but the trip as a whole was very, very good. A lot of schools did not get to go on their trip, so – um, this time Wartburg's very early spring break was a benefit to us. And usually, you know, it poses a couple of challenges with, uh, weather and sometimes with the lack of, you know, there being a huge number of other teams to play, but, you know, it would have been much worse if we would have been getting ready to go on the trip and then didn't get to go. And that was the case for some other schools, but, you know, we had a good break. The guys had a ton of fun. Um, we played some very good opponents on that side, but, but I thought that they were playing well and I was really excited to see what they were going to do coming back because you could just feel the momentum coming for them. Um, and the women had a good week too. And, um, actually, you know, without tooting my own home too much, the last meet that we won on that trip put my career wins for the women in first all time for the, for Wartburg history, which, so, you know, we got that and it was like, well, that's really cool. And I didn't expect to do that ever, but, um, and then the season ended, you know, when you get back, but you know, we played, our women played seven meets, our guys played six. So we got a bunch of competition in. We also, you know, saw some theme parks and um, went to the beach and I don't know, a lot of good pictures, a lot of good memories that come out of that. I'm very glad that we at least got through that part before we came back and, and things got cut off. Yeah, I'm happy that you guys were at least uh, able to have a, a good trip before it all hit the fan. So I don't already... know how we would have handled the money part either. I, I'm glad I don't have to figure that out. Yeah. Well, you already stole my next question. I was going to mention you. Yeah, that last win at Midway on the women's side was your 55th career uh, yeah. win for the women's team. So you know the women's all-time wins leader um, in just your fourth <laughs> year. I um, know. Well, I mean, as an alum, what does that mean to you? Okay. So there's two sides to this. Like the first side is that it kind of speaks to the longevity that people have had in this position prior to me. Um, I love my job and I intend to stay here for a long time. Um, but you know, I think that the longer, the way that, that, that tennis has changed is we play more meets now because we take that women's season more seriously. And I don't think that used to happen 20 years ago or whatever. So my competition is the coaches that are more recent, um, like Ben A. Strike, Mike Stridum, Matt Tyler. Um, you know, they've been in a more similar situation to us. And so, you know, we've played more meets. Our first year, I think we had like seven wins. So I started very slowly, but geez, the, the these ladies really took off. And, you know, I remember that I didn't win any of the matches. But uh, I think, like I said, for one thing, it just speaks to the longevity. But like as an alum and looking back on my tennis career at Wartburg, like I didn't really, you know, dive deeply into the tennis thing until I dove into coaching after I graduated. My coaching career is much more impressive than my playing career. Now my playing has caught up out of necessity. Like I've had to get a lot better. Um, and I would really like to get to play a full slate of college meets now. But um, you know, so it, it's when you go from just kind of being a role player in college to, you know, somehow breaking records as the coach, it it's very cool. And I, I'm, I'm proud of what the ladies have done. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm also, I guess I'm proud of the work that I have put in because it's taken a lot of learning to become the coach that I am right now. Like the coach that Rick hired is not the coach that is here right now. Like I've had to learn. 
in every facet of the game and in every facet of recruiting and administrative work and everything. Like it's been a total overhaul. Um, but I'm hungry and I really like what I do and I don't accept, like, I want to be the best coach that we've had. And so, um, so I've been happy to do it. And like I said, at the beginning of this, like this off time is allowing me to continue to do that because there's no practice to take care of right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. High school meets to watch. Yeah. Um, yeah. So let's talk a little bit about your student athletes. I know that tennis is sort of a sport where maybe not the D three level as much as like the, the D one, as far as, you know, there's kind of no breaks or maybe more at the D D one level where they're playing like the pro tours, like, you know, just 24 mm-hmm. seven is I'm sure they're missing tennis right now, but I guess maybe it was a little bit of a positive break and maybe you learn to not, you know, take things for granted and stuff like that. Yeah. Trent, I think you're right with some of that. Like even in division three in the off season, we still got tournaments and things that they can play. And it's not like they, there's ever really a time that they can't be on the court. And that's been the case, you know, for the past couple of months here where like all the nets have been taken down. Um, for me, this is probably the longest that I've taken a break from tennis since I started at Wartburg. Um, so I do expect them to be excited for practice, excited to compete in the fall when we do get back here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know it's been kind of a, just a strange time for all of our spring coaches that, We've seen some of the golf course and we're joking about how it's the most golf that we've ever played during yep. in, uh, you know, this early in spring. So but, like talking to, talking to some of my friends that are like not in this business, they're just getting time off work. And I am not, I don't like that. Like I want to be coaching right now. This is not a fun vacation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, like you mentioned, hopefully and just make you guys even more hungry for the fall. Right. So. You know, new seasons are always exciting. So I don't have any worries. They'll be fired up when that comes. But what I'm hoping is that I'm hoping that we can get some of these benefits right now and that we don't have to wait until the fall for that energy and enthusiasm to to kick in. Like if we can use this to have a great off season, I think that's going to be huge because I think that this off season is really important. Like it's going to be extra long. And it's going to be an opportunity that if we're doing the right things and other teams are not, we can pass them, but that works both ways. If we're not doing the right things and someone else is, we might have an unexpected loss or two at some point. But I think that there's a chance right now where some of these meets that are going to be close next season could be decided with what our players are doing right now. They missed a bunch of practice, which means they missed court time and they missed instruction. Um, And then things were closed. So really they couldn't get onto the courts as much as they normally could, but now they're not. Now nets are being put back up. um, Courts are being open. Things are being relaxed a little bit with the guidelines, um, at least in Iowa. And so if we want to beat some of those teams or we, you know, want to improve and pass some people, then we have an opportunity to do that. But there's work that needs to be done in order to make that happen. Um, and that's a little bit scary for a coach and because we're so used to being in control of things, you know, but I trust him, And I think that our culture is in a good place. And I think that our athletes are the type that are driven and, and we'll be doing those things. But, um, you know, we tried to set them up well, like in the, right when our season was canceled, we talked about goals and okay, if you want to beat this opponent or play this number, or you want to be better at some skill. Like, what will it take to do that? You know, how many, how many times you need to practice that or for how much time we need to practice that, or you need to work on that until you can do, you know, this skill, this percentage of the time, those kind of things, like just giving them some perspective of like, you know, if you want to have a great off season, you need to make it happen. And if you want something and you don't put in the work, then it's not going to happen. Wanting something doesn't really help, you know? Um, so I, I, I do trust that, that we're in a good spot and I think that, that they'll do a great job this off season as things open up here. But I agree that we are going to have that extra burst of energy when the fall comes, uh, after this long time off and they'll be ready to practice and to compete, but they just have to know that that's not where we're going to make all of our gains, like what they're doing right now. And now until the fall 
is is huge. Um, you touched on, you know, you said you had to recruit the day that everything got canceled. So that was kind of weird. But so what is recruiting in, in this day age like? Maybe in some ways it hasn't changed much and I'm sure it but still has a little bit. The things that the thing that has changed is that there is no tennis to watch. Um, there's there's no high school seasons right now. So like let's say I'm looking to increase the number of kids that I have that I'm recruiting that will be seniors next year. So like, you know, the next recruiting class, right? Well, I'm looking at their high school results from their sophomore year. And so that's pretty early to be looking at tennis players as one of their sophomore results, because maybe they, you know, a lot of kids get really into this after that. Maybe not your top kids, but a lot of kids do. Um, you know, and it's, it's just harder to seek out all the names and people that you want to be recruiting. And also right now, like we'd be starting to get into the postseason for them. And so I'd be traveling to different tournaments and um, different, you know, maybe district or state meets and things to watch the players and um, to introduce myself maybe to their parents or, th- you know, those kind of things that, that I get to do in this, during this time. And, and so those are done. The thing that is also different is that I've really just started a little bit earlier than I normally would because I've had the time. Um, and so I'm, I think I'm really off to a good start with that recruiting class just because I've had the time to, um, to find them and seek them out, but it has been some extra work and it's been some extra time looking at a computer instead of looking at actual tennis players. Yeah. But the process mostly remains the same. You know, you're, I'm introducing myself to them in a similar way and, um, you know, meeting with them online more often and, you know, still talking about Wartburg, still, still going to be the same great school when we get back. Yeah. Um, so speaking of recruiting classes, I'm sure the senior class was a little bit extra special to you since, you know, there was the first one that you had as mm-hmm. they graduate the same year or you came in the same year as their mm-hmm. freshman year. So there's four of them on each side. And, you know, we mentioned the, pro- the progression of the program as a whole. They both totaled school record wins last season, um, including the first conference title for the women in program history in 2018. You know, especially mm-hmm. on the women's side, you know, mm-hmm. all of them are in the top 10 career wins leaders at Warburg and either Isn't singles or doubles. Yeah. <laughs> so just talk about, um, yeah, kind of just talk about what you're most proud of the senior class, both for the men and women. Yeah. So the men's side, Grant Kincaid, uh, Alex Jedlick at Chris and Andrew Linkletter have been there the whole time. Ben Mason played baseball for his first two years. Um, he's been a cool story because he jumped in and and really actually became a leader very quickly, which takes a great guy and a great personality and some hard work. So um, I was you know proud that happened. Grant Kincaid went through a whole transformation as a player through the time that he was at Wartburg. Um, so he, I think, so Alex and Andrew like did not play varsity as much, and Andrew has been not. I think he's been very. Uh, he's been all in on tennis when he's at tennis, but he's very involved on campus. So like, he's not been all tennis all the time. I think he was all in on college instead of just being all in on tennis. Okay. And then Alex, you know, like I said, didn't play a ton of varsity, but had a very important role on our team and was always willing to do whatever we needed him to do. Um, I think that Grant Kincaid in that senior men's class put in the most time and the most mental effort into this. Like he Tennis was like his main, most important thing while he was at Wartburg the whole time. Um, so I feel like he's been with me through the entire, he has been with me through the entire time that that I have been the coach at Wartburg for this men's team. And um, it, you're, you are exactly correct. It is special because it is the first class that has done that. Um, on the women's side, it's, it's less of a mixed bag. Like all four of those players started with, our Wartburg tennis team when we had, I mean, we went through a huge transition in my first year. Like we lost, I think it was by from the end of Mike Stridham leaving, like the end of his you know final year to the end of my first year, like 10 of the top 11 players were gone. And so for those four women to have started with the program when they were showing up to practice and we had you know, some people that didn't necessarily still want to be on the team, 
Um, and so like commitment was low, they'd show up to practice and there'd be like two or three people there. And all of a sudden my plan doesn't work and the practice isn't that organized. And really I was a teacher until mid July. And then I took the job and moved to work, moved to Waverly in August. So like you have an ill-prepared coach, you have barely anyone on the roster. You have no one with experience. Like it was, I mean, I, I think we held it together. Right. But like, it could have been a mess. And so for those four women's players to like stick with us through that. And also, you know, that progression that I talked to you about, like as a coach, like, you know, me coming in, like, yes, I'm ready to start figuring this out, but I'm not experienced with it. So to stick through the not so good coaching and organization to stick through the small roster to stick through a first season where we lost quite a bit and got our butts kicked a few times and, um, you know, stay with it through all that. And then, somehow all four of them were on the top 10 career wins because they just, they just stuck with it. And, you know, I was talking with them on that last day that we mentioned, you know, they were stopping by my office and it was like these freshmen and sophomores now come to practice and they see this well-oiled machine. Like this is what, you know, you, like, all right, bring it in. This is what we're going to do. Here's your things you need to accomplish. Go do it. They go out. Everybody can hit. Everybody can play. Everyone knows the expectations. Like, that's just what they think it is. But like, it was not like that when we started. And so they've helped me build this thing into what it is now. And what it is now is hopefully a conference contender going forward. And that did not used to be the case. Yeah. And that's awesome to hear that they were really important pieces in helping, you know, continue to grow the culture. They're the most important piece. Like without... I, I just feel like without those seniors that were all in on this thing that we would not be where we are and I would not be the coach that I am. And, um, you know, so they, they've also just, they've also set this like example. And again, especially with the women, we were so young when I started that that freshman class was in charge of the team by midway through their freshman year or their sophomore year. Like they've been the leaders and in charge of this thing for so long that, you know, now this next senior class is going to have to figure out how to lead. And it's just, it's, it's not happened for me that those four seniors were not influential. Like they were influential the whole time I was here. So now without them, it's going to be a whole, you know, a reset on the personality. Yeah. Well, let's talk about a little bit about your time at Warburg. You graduated in 2011 and you're a native of Marion. So how did you get into tennis and then how did you end up at Warburg? I got into tennis because track is not fun <laughs> and I did not want to do that anymore. Um, our tennis team at my high school was not very good. I had me and like four other friends just decided, Hey, tennis seems kind of fun and we don't have to run a bunch, which is not fun. And then I can be out for a sport and we could just take over this program. So we did. And, you know, we went out, we lost all our meets the first year. We played a ton in the summer just because it was a social thing to do. And by my senior year, we went like nine and oh, we had the first unbeaten record in Marion high school tennis history. Now that doesn't mean much because the people we were playing were not excellent. Um, and there was a very important meet that was rained out that probably helped us out there. But um, yeah, I, and I didn't really take any lessons and it wasn't like a very serious high school program. And so you know, when I came to college, I had won a lot in high school and I loved competing. And so I wanted to do that some more. That's how I decided to, um, you know, kind of look into the tennis thing. And I wanted to go to a college that I thought that I could do that, but it wasn't really a huge factor. Um, the reason that I was drawn to Wartburg, I came to Wartburg on Iowa Private College Week. I visited Co and Cornell as well. Um, and Wartburg, just the feel of the campus was dramatically different from any of the other ones. Um, felt like people wanted me to be here. Everyone was inviting. It also, it's funny because like you think back to like being 18 years old, but the big factor was Wartburg explained to me what it would be like to go to college. How do I do my classes? How long does it take? What do credits do? And I was like, okay, I understand this. I would like to go somewhere where I understand. At some of the other ones, I just felt lost. And it's crazy that that can be a factor, but I mean, it was... I'm very glad that I made that decision. <clears throat> so this is a funny story. When I decided to 
play tennis at Wartburg was because I came out to the courts <clears throat> with a guy that I went to college with. His name was Aaron Frank. He's an alum. Okay. Um, neither of us were very good, but we didn't know that. So we went out to the courts and we start hitting and the brand new first time full-time coach was Ben a strike. And he was just out of the courts, like looking around, like, okay, who can I get to be on my team? Cause they had like six people returning on the roster. Right. So he needed some bodies and he came out and I broke a string and he just comes up to me. He's like, Hey, I'll string that if you join the tennis team. And I didn't know how to string rackets. I didn't know. Um, I didn't know how much it cost and I didn't want to spend any money. So I was like, okay, I guess I will join the tennis team. So that's, that's how I started playing tennis. And like, you know, when you look at from, that's how I started because I don't like track and because I want my racket strung for free to now I'm the coach heading into my fifth season. Like, that's I don't funny. know why people come up with 10 year plans. Cause it's, that's just not how life works. Yeah. Right place, right time. I guess something. Like I that. guess. Yeah. I guess. So yeah, fast forward. And now you're a coach, like you said, um, and you know, you're kind of a role player throughout your, your career there. You know, when did you kind of gain those aspirations to coach? Mm -hmm. So when I graduated Wartburg, I had an elementary education degree um, with a little bit of a science emphasis, but I started student teaching and then I started coaching a little bit. I was like, or not student, sorry, substitute teaching when I was done. Um, and then I came in and started coaching some kids at my old high school at Marion high school. Um, and that was Brandon Hornback who eventually came to Wartburg and played and he's on the top wins list as well. Um, and then another one, his doubles partner, his name was Michael Anderson. And, you know, I coached them a little bit and that's when I really started to like tennis was when I started to have, um, success because I knew the game, not because I needed to be able to play well. Um, and from there, you know, it kind of took off like, and it's, it really made it seem like I started bouncing around to a lot of jobs because, you know, I got a teaching job and then that led to me being an assistant coach at another school. And then I was a head coach at Dubuque Waller. And then, you know, I got a better coaching job or a better teaching job. And I went and helped out at Simpson college and Indianola high school. And I just was in a bunch of places, but that was how I got into the route was just through that volunteer job really, you know made me realize I was passionate about coaching and specifically tennis. And then, um, you know, just taking the different, you know, kick some butt at whatever place you're at. And if you get another better opportunity, then you can take that. Um, just help me move up from volunteer assistant to assistant to head high school to, you know, volunteer at a college, you know, and just kept bumping my way up until this position opened. Or there some things along the way there that, um, you maybe realize at a later time um, in your career that there's maybe some important things that you learned from all those different places that, you know, are important now at Warburg. Yeah. You know, some things that when you get to watch that many different coaches, you learn some tennis things, but you also learn like how these coaches are treating their players and what's important to them. And, um, you know, some of the conversation is asking, you know, asking them why they're doing certain things. I'm um, also say this, you learn some things that you don't want to do. And almost like, unfortunately, people are wired to notice negative things a little bit easier. Um, and I, I liked all the coaches that I coached for. I don't think I coached for any bad coaches or coached with any bad coaches. But you sort of figure out like, oh, I would do this differently. I would do this differently. But you don't think about that if you're not around another coach and having to try it their way. So you take some of their ideas and you also sort of develop your own thoughts out of maybe what you would want to do differently. What were some of the biggest challenges or differences going from high school to college? Learning to recruit is the biggest change. And I know like uh, the AD Rick Willis mentioned to me before that it's scary to hire high school coaches because they've never recruited before. And I, you know, thought it would be like, well, you talk to some kids and then they come to play for you, you know, like, <laughs> and it, it's, it's really a, it, it can be that if you don't have a plan. Um, and, you know, I, having taught high school and having gotten along with my players really well, I was like, I should be able to do this. No problem. But like, they don't actually care that my personality 
is something that they click with. Like that's, that is something they care about, but it is not a priority. Like it's not number one thing, you know, they need to find a school that fits that maybe needs to be in the location or maybe it needs to have the cost range, you know, needs to have the academics, like your team, you know, your players need to fit with them. There's so many things. And that's why, you know, I had to learn how do I, you know, what is our market? What kind of kid are we targeting? Um, what kind of things would rule them out? How do I first get a kid to respond to me? Like if I'm sending a message, how do I actually get them to respond first thing? And then how do I keep them interested? Or how do I like get in touch with their parents? Or um, how do you get someone to campus and what should they be doing on a campus visit? Um, you know, and what kind of questions should I ask? Or like, you know, what, just, just so many different little things. And then how do I keep 40 of these kids straight when it's just me doing the recruiting for two teams, you know? So at this point I feel really good and confident about it, but geez, have I had to really learn and learn on that front? You know, I've learned a lot about tennis and, um, and how to communicate and organize the team, but the recruiting has went from zero like no plan to actually, you know, now I have some confidence in knowing what I have to do. I'll say one other thing is um, I had to learn how to coach women because I'd never done that before. Oh, interesting. And, and while there, there's a few things that I learned and, and this sounds almost silly, like thinking back on it, but like women are just as competitive they just don't show it the same. And so just because they don't do the same things that I would do if I was being competitive, doesn't mean they are not, you know? And while I'm used to, oh, it's the women's team, they'll smile at me and they'll be happy. Like when they're competing, they'll get very serious. And I have to know that's not them being mad at me. They just want to win, um, you know? And, and also <clears throat> being able to go from, okay, men's practice, ends at 5 30 and women's practice begins at 5 30. So now how do like, I need to act just a little bit different to be able to communicate with these two teams, um, in a way that best benefits them. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Um, and there is another positive this spring. Um, I understand that, that, um, we'll be resurfacing the outdoor courts here mm -hmm. soon. And I believe you surpassed your fundraising goal. Yep. Yep. Just by a little bit. And so, um, you know, we ordered a stencil that is going to allow us to put our logo all over the court and, you know, we'll have to get some paint and that'll be part of the project there. Um, also getting surpass surpassing, it makes it us have a little bit of wiggle room because when someone gives you a big estimate, like they did, I just don't believe it's going to be exactly on the dot. Correct. And that we're going to have zero problems. So yeah, that was very cool to see, not just the amount of support that we got, but like, the variety of names and, you know, the different classes that people graduated in. And, you know, I'm, I'm 31. Like we're finally getting to the point where people that I graduated with are going to jump in and, and have some of the uh, resources to help out with that too. Um, but, you know, that, that all got started with a couple of, a couple of bigger donors came in and helped us out. Uh, Matt Harms, who also helped out with the baseball project there. He kind of kickstarted us with, he reached out and said he wanted to do a bigger gift. And then um, I, we used that to springboard this project and he got in touch with an old teammate of his named John Beck. They both played together at Waverly and then at Wartburg. Um, and those guys, those guys were, we needed those bigger donations, but then, you know, I think we had almost 90 people total that chipped in to make this happen. And, um, we're very excited about it. They should be starting sometime next week, it sounds like. Good to hear. All right. We'll we'll wrap it up with some some fun questions. Um uh -oh. <laughs> I'm curious. I know during the your high school coaching days you also taught high school science. Did yes. any of that transition to your role as equipment manager mm -hmm. at Warburg, or is that a stretch? <laughs> um, so the thing that is helpful is having taught chemistry and understanding polarity. So in different solutions, like if polarity is similar, polarity means like, is there a plus and a minus on the different sides of the molecule or is there not? Okay. Is the molecule like balanced in its charge or not? And so I kind of know some things that have a pole, like a polar solution and what things have a non polar 
um, geez, I forget all the words, but like polar and non-polar things, right? So like if you get a grass stain, that's made of grass. Grass is an organic chemical, so that's non-polar. So you need something non-polar. And then like, like there's, there's just, so like water doesn't get on grass stains. Water is a polar molecule. It doesn't work. So like knowing some of those things kind of helped. Um, also knowing how to get all the little numbers off their loops was, you know, the old coaches would just sand it off. And I was like, you fools, here's this chemical. But like, honestly, this is stuff you could Google. Like you, you don't need to have been a chemistry teacher or anything to have done that. Um, the place that it's most helpful is just in van talks, I think. <laughs> well, sounds like we got the right guy for the job to me. Right, right. Um, so, so you didn't start playing tennis until high school. Um, yeah. So who was your sports hero or role model growing up? So it's, it's funny. Like, I think my role models were the coaches that I played for. Like I really paid a lot of attention to them. And it's funny because I, I don't even think I noticed that until I got into college and started thinking about teaching. Yeah. And I noticed those were a lot of my role models. Um, but growing up, I didn't watch much tennis. My favorite athletes were like, I like the Dallas Cowboys and I like the Seattle Mariners. So you have some easy ones. Like I really, was a big fan of Ken Griffey Jr. And I really liked Ichiro when he came up and I liked that he was um, not just going to blunt force his way to being great. Like he was going to be smart. He was going to work hard and kind of use speed and things too. Um, very skilled athlete. And then um, I always loved Deion Sanders, even though he's real flashy and yeah. I don't know if that's always my style, but um so let's see him and Emmett Smith. And then uh, I think in high school, when Tony Romo became a thing, that was, that became like my favorite athlete. And now it's nice that he's in the broadcast booth, but mm -hmm. yeah, he's um, great. He, he's fun. And it's, so it's nice when your, your favorite athlete now just talks on the TV all the time, but yeah, that was what I wrote it for. Cause I didn't, I didn't really watch a ton of tennis. Probably okay. none. Actually. I watched no tennis. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Um, Favorite Warburg memory? I'm sure that's not an easy. Could be some from your coaching you. or, or as a student <laughs> athlete. I don't know if anyone stands out. I think that I don't. I don't know if I can give you my favorite Warburg memory, but I will tell you that a ton of the best stuff happens on those tennis spring break trips. Like those are the things that the stories come from. Those are the things that the best pictures are from. Um, and the things that get brought up when I talk to a lot of the alumni, um, you know, my favorite Warburg memory probably now is the women beating Luther last year. Like that was the first time that we did something like really special that no one had ever done. And, um, <clears throat> you know, it was, it was kind of a moment when we got to say, like, wow, we won conference. No one's ever done that. Our coaching staff is going to be coaching staff for the year. That's nuts. Because like, when I look at the other great coaches in the conference, I just, I guess maybe five years ago, I wouldn't have like put myself in with them. And now I feel like I can hang. So that's probably my favorite Warburg memory. But, um, you know, I, I'm writing to recruits about some things and something that comes up is like, okay, do you, do you have to live on campus for all four years in the dorms? And, you know, what they hear from some of their big school friends or sisters or brothers or whatever, that that's not a fun thing. You don't want to be living on campus for four years, but I think that's nuts. And I'll say that to them, like, that is where I had so much fun. Like my friends were like, I'd go back to my room and I had seven friends there every day, you know, and if I wanted to study, I could leave, but like, it's, it's, it's just so much fun to live there and just to see your friends, you know, I'm still in touch with most of those guys. So, um, you know, the, some of the best things I got out of Wartburg were the people that I met and have kept in touch with. So that, that's where all the memories stem from is all those people. And, um, you know, like I said, those spring break trips are an opportunity, but if I had to pick one right now, the one that, that holds big is when we, when we beat Luther last year. Yeah, we that's should do awesome. that again sometime. Yeah, sounds good. <laughs> next fall, we're looking to forward to next fall. Right, um, all we right. got some work to do. I'll let you sort of close it out. Anything else you want to talk about or have a message to the Warburg tennis community? Mm. Well, I'm going to send something out showing them our new courts when they start getting going, and 
um, you know, hope to see some people out to check them out in the fall and see us play. I, you know, I got our schedule set up and things should be good. And um, our men's program is going to have geez, seven new faces to it. And a guy, Luke Smith, who was injured all last year. So eight new guys on the court and like four or five guys returning, you know, so it's, it's going to be a whole new face and um, you know, our women are going to be strong and deep again. So I'm looking forward to it and hoping we can have some school and some tennis in the fall. Absolutely. That's exciting. Well, make sure the listeners are following Warburg Tennis on social media. That's just at Warburg Tennis on Twitter and Instagram. So thanks again for joining me, Chris. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for tuning into the Birdcast. If you enjoyed the podcast, Please do us a favor with a retweet at Warburg Nights on Twitter or a share on Facebook. Check out the official Warburg Athletics website at go-nights.net for all the up-to-date news and information, where you'll also find the latest podcast posted. Feel free to email me at trent.jackson at warburg.edu with any feedback, and thanks again for listening.